All right, guys, in this video, we are gonna be making a little paddle-shaped Debo out of hickory, so stick around. So today we're gonna be working on a little hickory flat bow. Now I've got a quarter of a hickory log here. Uh, this thing's just a little over 60 inches and about six inches wide. And so the first thing that I'm gonna do is just split this thing in half and then we can start reducing it and uh, making a bow. All right, so before we get started on this bow, I wanna go over just the very basic tools that you're gonna to need. So we're primarily going to be using a draw knife. We'll use a farrier's rasp. It's got a rough side on it. Uh, we will use a little compass. This is not absolutely necessary, but it will come in handy. And then we'll also be using some card scrapers. Now this staves a little bit shorter than the bows that I typically make. Uh, and so what we're going to do is end up making a D bow, a bow that's bending through the handle. So this bow that we're going to make today is not going to have a stiff riser like some of the other bows that you might have seen me make. So that split super clean. I like that. That'll make two really nice little bows. So the first thing that I want to do is go ahead and clean up one side. We're going to use this clean side to scribe a line uh, so that we can end up with parallel sides and then we'll cut the other side to match. Now if you look at this stave, the way it's split, this thing is kind of pie uh, wedge shaped. So we've got the back, which is the outside of the tree, is going to be right here and then the side kind of comes down like this. What I want to create is more of a 90 degree angle here. And so I'm going to take my draw knife, I'm going to take this ridge off right here, and I'm going to try to square the side up with the back of the bow. So if you're into bow building or primitive or traditional bow hunting, go ahead and subscribe to the channel because we're putting out a new video every Thursday. And if you're looking for more in-depth bow building instruction, you might want to go check out my Patreon site. There's loads of videos over there. And then there's also my book and my DVD set that's available on my website. <clears throat> All right. So now we've got our top edge that we were working on about a 90 to the back of the bow, which is gonna be where the outside of the tree was. So I wanna take just a minute to talk about the back of the bow. This is the part of the bow that faces away from you when you're holding and shooting the bow. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos on building Osage orange bows, you'll know that I remove the bark, the sapwood, and then I follow or expose along the back one unbroken yearly growth ring. Now with most of the white woods, that's not really the way that you're going to do, that's not the way that you're going to prepare the back. For most white woods, all you've got to do is remove the bark and the cambium. And on this particular piece of wood, that's exactly what was done. This, this was done before I ever got the wood. Uh, you can actually see these little brown spots. That's just little remnants of the cambium, which is the layer between the wood and the bark that's, uh, that was left on this bow. And that's not going to cause any problem at all. And so with this bow, the back is already prepared. There's no need to chase a ring or any of that stuff. So we can just move on. We can skip that step and uh, move on with the process. All right, so now that we've got this side squared up, I'm going to use my pencil and my compass here to scribe a line inside the stave here that parallels this side that we just cleaned up. And for this bow, I'm going to make it about two inches wide. It's a fairly flat stave, meaning that it doesn't have a lot of crown to it. If it was a higher crowned stave or came from a smaller diameter tree, I might make it a little bit narrower. Now to do this, you don't have to have a compass. You can do this with just your fingers. And I show how to do that on some of my older bow building videos. But these compasses, they're not very expensive and they really come in handy. We're going to use it several times for several different things during this, this build. All right, so this line is going to be a little bit difficult to see on this camera because it's so fine, but you might be able to see it. 
Uh, now I'm going to take my draw knife and I'm going to bring this side into this line and then we're going to have, when, when I get done with that, we're going to end up with a stave that's perfectly parallel. And then once we get that done, we'll start bringing these tips in and tapering the tips out. Again, when I'm doing this, I'm going to try uh, as best I can to maintain about a 90 degree from the back of the bow. If you're working with a stave that's got some crown to it, you're just gonna have to average that out a little bit. So I've got the edges down pretty well parallel. Now, because this thing's gonna be a D bow, a bend through the handle bow, I don't need all this stuff on the belly side. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and knock that off to make this thing a little bit easier to, to maneuver and handle. Got a big knot there. There we go. Not really advisable to use your draw knife in that way, but proceed at your own risk. All right, so this is a pretty straight stave, really straight actually. And so I'm just gonna lay this thing out on a string line. Uh, you could do this with a chalk line, but I don't have one. So I'm just gonna use some leftover bowstring material and put it on there and make some marks. It's in. chalk line would be really the best way to do this. You just put it on there and pop a line. All right. So I think with this one, I'm gonna make kind of a paddle shaped bow, which is, is kind of an hourglass shape. So it gets narrow at the uh, handle, mid limb, it's the widest and it tapers down to pretty fine knocks. So I've got the handle here laid out about maybe an inch and an eighth or so wide. Uh, we're gonna, come and make a nice slow taper out or slow flare out to the mid limb and then it's going to narrow back down uh, to half inch knocks down here. So from the center of the bow I'm going to measure, let's see, oh, we'll go out about 10 inches or so. And then same on this side. So I don't I don't usually like to use a Sharpie on white woods because it soaks into the wood, but this pencil is kind of hard to show up on the camera, so I'm going to go ahead and use it. I use them on Osage because Osage is so dense that the Sharpie marks don't really stay. So now I'm just going to take these edges pretty close to those lines. You know what? I'm going to cheat a little bit. I've got a power plane over here that'll make short work of that.
All right, so I've got the rough side profile. Got about 15 millimeters or so deep here, 35 here, and then it just comes from this uh, fade, which is kind of a fade, uh, and just slopes up. This is just gonna be a rough, uh, rough side profile. Uh, once we start tiller and this, all this stuff's gonna change. So I'm gonna take, uh, take it right on down to this now. Starting to get somewhere. I'm gonna round these sharp edges off on the back. That's gonna make a pretty cool looking little bow. Let's go throw it up on the tiller and rack and see what it looks like. It's like the left hand limb's a little stiffer, but overall look pretty doggone good. Right in here it's a little stiff. Take a little bit off this, put it back up there, and then we can probably cut some knocks into it. Pretty stiff. Looks pretty even though. I'm gonna take a little bit more off and then restring it. It's fairly even side to side. I'm just gonna keep track of the number of scrapes and make the same number of scrapes on either side. 
maybe 30 or 40 per side. This limb here, a little stiffer. That left limb is still stiff. It's just not rounding out like this one. Need to take a little more off right in here. Still pretty stiff right out in there. Starting to even out a little bit. This handle's not really flexing any at all, so I'm going to take a little off that too. That's 26 inches right there. So that's 45 pounds at 26. That'll be about right. Okay. I can feel it flexing in my hand just a tiny little bit. Let's go shoot this thing. So this little bow turned out really nice. It's uh, 45 pounds at 26 inches. I could probably stretch it to 28 inches, but it's kind of short. And so I'm just gonna leave it at a short draw like this. So with this bow, I'm not gonna cut an arrow shelf into it or anything like that. I'm just gonna shoot it uh, off my knuckle, uh, more of a primitive style bow. So I really like hickory as a beginner's bow wood for a couple of different reasons. Uh, number one is it's very readily available. This stuff grows from Florida to New York State and everywhere in between. Uh, it's something that most people, if you have access to some woods, most people can get their hands on it. Um, and uh, another reason is that it's a very tough wood. Uh, you can make a lot of mistakes on this and still end up with a bow. And then the third reason is you can cut it green and you can get started on a bow immediately. And so there's no need to wait you know, a year, two years for this stuff to dry like you would have to with Osage. Uh, you can cut the tree, strip the bark off, and get started immediately and get the bow roughed out and then let it dry. And once you get the bow roughed out, it'll dry and depending on the conditions, uh, it could be as little as a month or two before you can uh, continue on with the bow building process. 
Now, one of the things that you'll notice about hickory as opposed to some of the other top tier bow woods is it does tend to take a little bit of a set. You can see that this one's got about a half inch of set or so um, already, and we haven't even shot the thing. Now, one way that you can get around that with hickory and a lot of the other white woods is heat treating uh, the belly of these bows. Uh, I'm not gonna go over that in this video. It is something that I've covered over on my Patreon site, and it might be something that I'll cover uh, in a future video here on YouTube. So once you get your bow done, you're gonna wanna seal these things up really, really good, uh, and you're gonna wanna do it pretty quickly, if, especially if you're in an area where there's a lot of humidity. Uh, I'm down here in Florida right now, the humidity is probably 80 something percent. And so I'm gonna sand this bow down and I'm gonna get it sealed up uh, as quickly as I can. One of the things, one of the characteristics of hickory is it tends to soak up humidity or environmental moisture. And so right now, the uh, moisture content of this wood is about 10%. If I were to leave this thing outside overnight, um, it would probably raise up to 14, 15%, and that's just gonna cause it to take more set. Uh, I use true oil, which is like a gunstock oil, gunstock finish. Uh, basically all it is is uh, boiled linseed oil with some drying agents in there so it dries a lot quicker than just regular boiled linseed oil, but that works really well. I put uh, six or seven coats on there and I take my bows out in the rain, uh, sleet, uh, snow, it doesn't matter because it's uh, pretty much impervious to the water. Right now I'm working on a very detailed video that's going to cover how to build a bamboo backed Osage bow. Hopefully it'll be out next week, but with all of the shipping stuff that's going on with COVID, uh, we're going to have to, to wait and see if I get all my materials. But uh, that video is going to be out before too long. All right guys, that's going to do it for this week. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. We'll see you next Thursday.